site. Okay, we are recording. Gershon, take it away. Yes, thank you. So um, for those who don't know us, um, your hosts in this meetup are myself, Geertjan. I'm a product manager in Oracle, focused on Oracle Jet, just like uh, John, uh, also known as JB Brock. And we'll be going through this meetup uh, together. We do this, we try to do this um, once every quarter or so, focused on one of the major releases or a big um, new development in the Oracle Jet ecosystem. And we also try and bring in a bunch of um, use cases and community activities that are going on around the world. So the focus of this particular meetup is um, JB explaining to us what is new in JET 7, and also to talk a little bit about the Visual Studio Code plugin, how to set it up and, and how to use it. And after that, we're going to switch to a couple of very short presentations by different people talking about how their organization makes use of JET, and we see also some community activities um, going on around the world with JET. So with that, let's switch over to JB. All right, thanks, Katha. Uh, so welcome everybody to our, our third meetup. Uh, we just finished up our, our little social hour ahead of time and, and it was really great once again just to kind of uh, have a, an off topic uh, conversation with anybody that uh, happened to have questions. Today uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that have been going on in 7.0 um, and in 7x really. Uh, one of the key things that came out in 7.1 uh, that we didn't, uh, the minor version 7.1, 7.2, they're, you know, they're bug fixes primarily, things like that. So there's you know, usually a ton of things to talk about on those. But in 7.1, if you go to the release notes of 7.1, under the uh, things you need to know first, there was this uh, third line down that uh, where we introduced a new alternative expression evaluator. And it's, it seems rather uh, mundane or, or rather kind of complicated in, in, in what, it, what it says, but the reality is, is we're running, we're getting more and more uh, products that are running in very strict uh, CSPs or con uh, content security policies on their websites. And Knockout by default uh, runs an eval against uh, the expressions. So if you're doing a binding, you know, within, if you're looking at at uh, uh, bindings in Oracle code or, or something of that nature. And you've got, uh, well, I don't have an example right up top, but it, you know, when you're doing the, the binding on the HTML side, by default Oracle or Knockout does that, uh, runs an eval. And that would uh, run against a strict content security policy because you would have to end up uh, enabling this unsafe eval flag inside of there. And, and we don't wanna uh, have companies do that. So we introduced this new alternative expression evaluator, which you can read more about uh, in the documentation. It, uh, it basically, we now take over the expression evaluation if you put that into play and uh, we do not run eval. And so you don't have to turn on the uh, unsafe eval and you can run in those environments. So check that out and in the release notes for 7.1, which is the current production release. So if you go to oraclejet.org, it will, you can look at the uh, release notes and figure that part out. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, some of the stuff that's coming in 7.2, so a little more preview of what's going on in 7.2. Uh, we have historically, we have been doing things with uh, TypeScript, adding more and more things with TypeScript. And in this particular 7.2 release, which is coming out uh, on September 16th, the first day of open world, uh, we're going to, take TypeScript to its next level. So we've had this proof of concept uh, template out there that you could uh, go out and download. But now we're, um, we're actually bringing in the ability to directly work with TypeScript from the command line. So the OJET CLI. So if I do an OJET create and the app name and just do a dash dash template equals uh, nav drawer, which is the normal way. Normally, if you did this, it would turn around and open uh, or create a JavaScript based uh, starter template. But you can now add this dash dash TypeScript flag to the end of it. And this will generate a TypeScript based application. 
We even go to the point of, as we're creating this, we drop down a starter template, the same nav drawer, nav bar, basic and blank that we've done in the past for JavaScript. Those are all available in TypeScript now. Um, when you run this command, we will look to see if you have TypeScript already pre-installed with a global flag. If you do not, we will install a local copy of TypeScript for you. So we take care of that as well. Um, when you run this and it generates the application, you now have TypeScript built into the app itself. So if I go to, in this case here, uh, it generates an application like this under the source, which is what we recommend that you put into your source uh, source control or, or source uh, control systems like Git or something of that nature. You now have all of the view models and all this kind of stuff, the app controller, the root, things of that nature are all under uh, TS. Uh, there is still the JS, which has uh, currently the uh, web components are still uh, automatically generated under JavaScript. We're working on the next release of, of the CLI to bring those up in TypeScript. We just couldn't get it in in time for this release. Uh, and the views are still under here under HTML, but um, that is there. But we don't move, as some of you who have used that proof of concept in the past, when we did the compilation, of the TypeScript, we would compile it into this JavaScript directory and pollute it. And we do not do that any longer. So if I do, I bring up my command line here, and hopefully you guys can see this. If I do an OJet build, it's going to actually do the compilation, uh, the TypeScript compilation, and it puts everything down in the web folder. It does not pollute the JavaScript uh, directory with a bunch of JS that was transpiled. You only have the TypeScript in there. So that's uh, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we fixed when we brought this out. Now, the nice thing is, is that this is also, um, you can do an OJet serve and it will watch your TypeScript uh, as well as your JavaScript, as well as your HTML and CSS, just as we've always done in the past. And if you make your changes, it will recompile and refresh the browser just like it did with everything else. It's also smart enough that if you change just the HTML, it'll just refresh the browser with that HTML change. It won't re recompile the TypeScript. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, a nice change here. So if I'm looking at this app here and I come back over to my TypeScript, um, let's see, I bring up something like this. Uh, let me bring up my HTML as well, just really quick. So if I were to make a change in the HTML and do a save, you're gonna see that it actually updated it there and it just refreshes. You could barely catch the end of the refresh on that. If I make a change in the TypeScript, I gotta move this little zoom thing out of the way. If I come over to my TypeScript and I'm just going to add a comment in there instead of doing anything real. But if I do that, you'll see that it actually starts to recompile the TypeScript. And then if I go back to my browser, you'll see that once the compilation is completed, then it will refresh the browser for me. So it takes all of that into account. If you do some change in your TypeScript and it breaks it, um, so let's just type in something and that's going to be a break. I hit save. It's going to fail the compilation down here, and it'll give you the the real TypeScript compilation failure. It'll tell you you know exactly where it failed in the line and so forth. But it resumes watching. It doesn't actually crash out, so the watch is still going on. Uh, it doesn't refresh the browser, of course, because the compilation failed. So there's nothing to replace. So now when you fix that and and do the save, then it will come back and and then it will refresh the browser and it will work. So we've we've tried to take into consideration the you know, typical work process for this and um, we hope people are really going to like it. So it's been working well for us internally for a while. So that's the TypeScript side. Um, since we're in the, um, in the terminal here or in Visual Studio Code, I also wanted to show you something that's coming up new in 7.2 with the, um, the Visual Studio Code extension that we have. So we've had a beta release of the VS Code extension for JetCore out since 7.0. 
and you've been able to download that off of the Oracle Jet uh, OTN site, the download site, for some time and, and give it a try. Um, and what that actually does is it gives the ability for you to do code snippets and, um, and code completion, those types of things. The newest version that will come out with Jet 7.2 is our first 1.0 release um, and what we consider our first production release. And the, some of the things that it adds uh, into uh, the capabilities or into the, uh, into the app is, is actually really cool. So let me show you, I'm gonna switch projects here really quick. Everything that we do in JET and at Oracle across our different applications is really targeted at um, web components and working with web components. So as you can see with normal code completion, if I wanted to do something like an OJ uh, button or you know chart or something like that, I can start typing in and it'll give me code completion in here. I can hit a, a control space and it'll give me all the different things that I can do in here on my y-axis and all the different options. You can see that there's actually documentation that goes along with it over here. Um, so if I start to uh, say something like type, this is the chart type, I can hit space and it'll give me all the different uh, types of chart things. So this is all the code completion that's just built in today. You get all of this even with the, uh, the 0 0.5 beta release that's available with 7.0. One of the things that we're adding though in, in, set, in the, the 100 release that's coming out with 7.2 is the ability to work with your own web components. So today we have code completion for all of the JET stuff. You know, we provide the metadata for that so we can do those kinds of things. But if you wanted to, let's say you had your own web component. So in this particular case, I have a web component in this app called demo update item. If I started to type, DEM and I hit O, oh, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no completion for it. There's nothing. But what we've built into this is the ability now within this version of the, of the extension, I can do a control shift P, which brings up this command palette and you can type in jet to narrow it. And we have the ability to import web component metadata. You can also clear it. But in this case, if I say import, all I have to do is point to the, what the project that I'm working on. In this case, this is the one that's, that's opened. I'm going to go into the source of it. I can narrow down a little bit further to get more specific, but it'll search and it'll search down through the directories recursively, depending on where you are. And I say, select this folder and it'll go down and, and look for all of the components and it tries to find the component.json file and it reads the metadata from that and loads it in. So you'll see down here at the bottom, it says it added tag lookup for one component, one web component, please restart. There's a bug in Visual Studio code that forces you to do the restart. That's not something that Jet is requiring you to do, but since it's telling me to do it, I'm gonna do it. I'll close that, start it back up. And now when it comes back up, if I now type in here and now I start to say demo, you'll see that now that actual item is available to me. And if I hit space and control and I say, it actually is reading out the descriptions and, and all the information from the component.json file. So what it's doing is it looked at this component.json and it sees in here all of these different properties. If there were methods or uh, events and so forth, it would load up all that information as well. Um, I've added a description in here just to, so to show how it got picked up. But uh, so as you start to go through there, you now start to get the actual information for all of those. So your custom web components now have code completion available to them as well. So those are the things that I wanted to show for um, that are coming out in 7.2. Uh, there are a few more issues or a few, few more things going on as well, but I want to let the uh, uh, the other perfect. folks get in on their presentation. So back to you, Gerhard. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so that was a brief introduction to what's coming up in the next release 7.2 as well as 7 as a whole and the Visual Studio Code plugin. So 
um, looking at the agenda, let's very briefly look at um, what's coming up at the upcoming Oracle Code 1 and Open World. Um, so maybe, um, JB, you can give me the um, your rights yep. for sharing. There you go. You got, you got okay. it. Okay. So I'm going to start sharing. And all I want to share with you is this document. Is this visible? JB? Looks good. All right. So here is the schedule for Open World and Oracle Code 1, which starts um, next week or the week after from the 15th, 16th of September. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can see we have a very packed schedule. Um, Monday is starting with Mark Simpson from Griffiths Way talking about uh, form mod uh, modernization. Um, we have a session, uh, JB and myself, on web components, the tools and the techniques for that. Uh, Luke Boss from ePROCI talking about uh, lessons learned from their Oracle Jet projects. There is a meet the expert uh, session. So if you're around, that's a place where you can meet up with us. Um, JB and I will be um, available from 10.30 to 11.30 to chat. Um, and then again on Tuesday, Mark Simpson talking again about JET in another context with chatbots. Um, and then there's a session on that same day with Mark Simpson from Griffiths Waite and Ahmad, who is here on the conversation. Um, Vinay Kumar from Atreides talking about their lessons learned. Um, JB and I are doing a session with uh, Bob Rubart, an interview. So this will be put on YouTube and things like that, talking about the current state and the community and so on. If you're around, you're very warmly invited to join us on Wednesday morning um, at 8 a.m. for a coffee. So fuel up for the day with the Oracle Jet team at Specialties Cafe and Bakery, 101 New Montgomery Street, San Francisco. Meet us there at 8 in the morning and we'll have a coffee together and a chat, kind of a social meetup before the day begins. Um, there are a number of sessions, of course, about VB as well. And um, this one is just one that we're mentioning here. Um, Oracle Jet Development, the visual approach by Venkatesh. Um, and then we have another Meet the Expert session. Um, for people who are completely new to JET, we have a session um, as well. So if you're going to be around, so Penny is here and John Sim as well um, in this meetup. So um, you'll hear a bit more from both. Um, oh, I have in here a session on NetBeans. Um, some JET will be mentioned in there too. Um, Thursday, there are three sessions that deal with JET, uh, modernize, modernizing user interface. So this is a hands-on lab. So if you're going to be there, this is where you can get some hands-on experience. Um, and then there's a session um, comparing web components in the Java world presented by Sven Rippers from Varden and me in the JavaScript world by means of JET. And finally, um, on Thursday, there's a session by Hassan and Ahmad about um, what ICS is doing with forms modernization, which you'll hear about uh, right after this. So as you can see, it's a very full and active program, and we've been tweeting this around, and we'll be tweeting this, this um, version of the plan around as well. Um, you can see a lot of customers and partners and so on talking about JET. Uh, JB and myself are trying to keep our, our sessions to a minimum and giving as much space as possible to customers and partners to talk about their real life experiences. So with that, I'm going to switch over to Ahmad, actually, to talk about uh, ICS in Jordan and their work with forms modernization with JET. Uh, maybe you can do this, JB, switch over as host to him. Yeah, let me see what I can do here really quick. Uh, and Gijan, can you share that schedule with us, the open yes. world? Yeah. Yes, we will, for sure. You find it on Twitter. And we'll send it around for sure, yes. Thank you. So, Ahmad, I hope you're ready. And yes. Just yes. A, a five minute overview of what you guys have done uh, with the cool work um, over the past year or so with JET. Yes, uh, I just uh, trying to share my screen. Yes. OK. So I'm no longer sharing, so you should be able to. Okay. There you are. There it goes. Yep, we got okay. you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, JB and Khirtian. Uh, 
First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Ahmed Abu Shushe from ICSFS Jordan. I'm senior technical uh, consultant for Oracle uh, Fusion Middleware products. So ICS uh, is a global uh, banking software provider. We have been working uh, with Oracle Forms and Reports for more than 20 years. So recently we have a big challenge for moving from from moving from Oracle Forms technology to, to web technologies. So we have been studying uh, more than one option to which technology to, to use, starting from ADF and JSF, and finally Oracle Jet. So since Oracle Jet is an open, it's a collection of open source components and it's internally used by Oracle, we decided to move from Oracle Forms to Oracle Jet to modernize our screens and uh, to create a lightweight inter and uh, modern interface. As you may know, Oracle Forms technology is a thick client uh, technology. It's a client server, two-tiered, where you have an Oracle form that has all the business logic, the UI presentation, and everything in one place. So you have your user interface items, you have your triggers, you have the PL SQL code connected to the database, centralized database where your transactions are saved there. So there was a big challenge to move from a thick client environment and two-tiered architecture into an Oracle Jet application. So the challenge was to move to a three-tiered architecture where we have a separate UI from the business logic and the, the security layer and uh, after that to the database level. So we decided to split our forms application into UI and then business logic and a model. So the challenge also here was to separate the UI from the business logic. In Oracle Forms, you have the UI item and the business logic incorporated with it. For example, the business validations, or if you have a trigger for some action or event. So everything will be together inside Oracle Form. So we extracted the UI and converted it into an Oracle Jet application, then took took the BL SQL code and created uh, REST APIs. So we have an Oracle Jet application with uh, the user interface only, and all the business logic and the model components are converted into uh, REST uh, web services. And to secure this uh, single, single page application with the web services, we created an OAuth authenticator. So every user wants to log into the application, it should authenticate with the OS2, then he can log in and use the application. So this is the architecture and how the transformation we, we are using. It's a challenging and it takes some time, but it's converted our application from a thick client, and Oracle Forms reports into a three-tiered application okay so Perfect. i want yes so i want to show you a quick demo yes on our uh, application we we converted uh, one of our modules it's the uh, hr management information system so i will leave you now with the video perfect okay Okay, so this is an HR application where the employee will log in to request an annual leave or a sick leave or a vacation request. So we have the menu on the left. Okay. And we have here the options on the right. Now the employee will request a leave.
he will choose the uh, starting date and ending date. Okay, so the uh, leave request is now submitted. He can always check his requests here. For example, he uh, might request an annual leave or he might request uh, for an official document. All your requests will be recorded here and he can trace the status for each request. So his leave request is pending approval. Okay. Now I will sign out and log in as a manager to, to approve this request. Yeah, so as a manager, I have a job basket. This is my job basket. All the requests from uh, my employees will, will be displayed here. So I have the, the leave request here, all the details. Okay, now I will approve this leave request. Okay, so it's now approved. There are also other functions. He can request a salary script. Also, he can display his uh, vacation balances, the sick, sick leave and the yearly leave. So this is one of many different applications you're creating with JET. Yes, this, this, this actually, this module wa was completely co converted from Oracle Forms into Oracle Jet. So it was a complete modernization from Oracle Forms into Oracle Jet. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So um, maybe we can switch to EcoView Solutions. And we have Penny here to, uh, <coughs> to switch to. Maybe you can stop sharing. Um, Yes. Ahmad. Yes. Yeah, thank you, John. Let's, so let me try to share. Hold on. So just five minutes again would be ideal. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Gretchen and John, for having me here. So my name is uh, Pani Gumaraju. I am the Director of Technology of Ecovi Solutions. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to go through why we are using JET and uh, what we are and, and all that, right? So going to our uh, company, let me show you. Okay. So basically, Ecovi Solutions is, is a software development and uh, solutions company here in Atlanta, uh, US. So we are a gold partner with Oracle uh, since 2011. And so we basically specialize in uh, implementing the Oracle uh, Web Center imaging uh, and also automate their API invoicing process. So and we also have some uh, technology and application practice. And one of them recently that we used was the uh, building this UI for, for the Web Center imaging applications. All right. Um, so in our Web Center imaging application, so one of the uh, challenges for all the customers was with the solution was to have they don't have the uh, kind of a dashboard tool uh, to be able to track the invoices all the way through the process so to to mitigate that gap and also uh, are the challenges so we uh, we started you know building this user interface right so when we were thinking about uh, building the user interface I think one of the major challenges was which which UI to go for or which uh, tool to go for right uh, I think uh, looking at all the Oracle technologies that we have and, and the at that time the Oracle Jet was the, um, uh, you know, was the most beneficial thing that we thought of. And that's when we started uh, working our uh, UI 
uh, with with the Oracle Jet technologies. So the uh, b- basic advantage and uh, of this Oracle Jet is, you know, ease of setting up these projects uh, with Oracle Jet. And simply, I mean, it's very uh, very easy to set up these projects. And also we have some uh, predefined frameworks and templates, right, available in the Jet framework as well. And also it's, it's um, uh, basically it's um, faster development cycle compared to the other frameworks. And, uh, and of course, with a rich set of user interface components. And, and the user experience has been uh, uh, really good with all the customers that we have already uh, implemented this, uh, uh, this dashboard as well. Um, so just wanted to go through some of the, uh, the UIs that we have um, built for this dashboard. Uh, so one of the major features is to having the centralized user interface uh, to, to process the invoices, uh, starting from the scanning to the payment process. And also we have some consolidated search capabilities within the UI. Uh, we have some of the reports, the metrics, um, and all the end-to-end kind of uh, reconciling view of all the invoices starting from the scanning to the payment process. And we also uh, created some of the reports within the dashboard as well. So going through, you know, I just uh, wanted to show you some of the features, I mean, in the UIs that we have built. So this is the main dashboard page uh, that you know users can log in and uh, look into their invoices um, and see where they are within the process. And it will show you all the, uh, the metrics around each of the, uh, the phases that the invoices go through and, and have the users to uh, ability to search for the invoices as well. Uh, I'll just go through uh, the, each of these slides here. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, and, and then some of the metrics that we used using all the JET components, uh, different, uh, you know, to give them the ability to uh, to look at the invoices by the supplier, by the type of the invoice, by the, uh, the task assigned to a user, and the exceptions and so forth, um, and and some of the OCR metrics as well. So just uh, different types of uh, components that are used in uh, uh, Jet to show all the KPIs, basically. Perfect. Um, and also have the centralized UI to process the invoices as well. Uh, and the reports and the reports you know you can do an export to excel pdf or any any type of uh, uh, export capabilities also on the reports uh, layout so Bonnie, one one yes, really sir. really quick yeah sure uh, i'm okay i can't wait yeah sorry I no, go, go ahead doctors yeah go ahead hello there mm-hmm. uh, i just uh, saw a screen behind before that you had the web center content inside the jet so out of curiosity, because you had the same issue, how did you manage to do that? Like uh, you're saying the web center, the jet yes. is deployed on the web center, right? And mm-hmm. the web center content is still, we are using the, the solution we implement is still, you know, Oracle's web center, um, you know, the web center imaging solution coming from capture, your, uh, your forms recognition, your uh, imaging repository and all that, it's still web center. The underlying technology is still Oracle web center API automation solution, and, but the front end is what that we have uh, built using the Oracle Jet so that the, you know, it will give a better experience, user experience for the users. No, no, my question is how did you manage to put the web center content UI inside the Jet UI? Web center content. Oh, okay. So this this screen you are talking screen, about. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we we use the Oracle Imaging. There is um, APIs, uh, Java APIs as well. To mm-hmm. and there is a plugin uh, URL that you can use. The plugins you can uh, use through the web center. I mean through the Jet as well. So that's how we are able to use that. Uh, okay. There are some of the URLs or the plugins from Imaging uh, that we could use. Is it VI Frame or a uh, some? or something else that you build this UI inside? Uh, I think it should be a VI frame, but I have, my, I have to ask my developers to see how. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you, thank you. Sure. So that's actually perfect because Soteris is the next uh, presenter. He's going to briefly talk about um, what they've been doing in Greece with uh, Jet. So thank you very much, Bernie, for that overview. And yeah. for anyone interested, there'll be a longer one, of course, at, um, at Oracle Code 1 and open world as well as with Ahmad from ICS and they'll be they'll be on YouTube and so on this was just a brief overview of what's going on there sure thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much so Tiris, maybe you can take over control and talk about your use case with jet okay one question how do I, t- I t- 
underneath meeting at the top in the zoom you should see start share in the menu okay i think i found it so again about five minutes just very brief yeah. uh, overview yep we can see your screen perfect great okay hello there uh, my name is Sotiris Marudas. I'm the development software development manager for Munich Rehealth Tech. Uh, we are a company that we are uh, building software for health insurance business. We're a subsidiary of Munich Re. And uh, we have a product uh, that is called Mednext that is it is developed about uh, 20 years now. It started with Oracle and it started with Oracle Forms and uh, then it, it passed to ADF and uh, the last couple of years we are building a new generation of this product uh, which uh, is a SOA architecture product with uh, Oracle BPM, Oracle SOA behind and in the front, in the front end we have decided to use uh, Oracle Jet. Just for your information, before that we have built also some other products with Oracle Jet uh, 2, some mobile applications, so we have uh, monitor that since the beginning. Perfect. Uh, so just an overview of our application. So we have, like I told you, the backend stack is this. And in the front end stack, we are using Oracle Z with TypeScript, SCSS, and BEM architecture. That's the, what we have in, from technology perspective. So now I'm going to add to a short demo just to have nice let me okay So that's the login screen of our product. So I'm logging in with our uh, credentials. I have to tell that our product consists of five Jet applications. So we have five modules. This is the enrollment module which manages all the policies and all the members uh, of the business. So we have also the invoice module and other modules. Each module has this page which holds the task of a user. So you can create tasks inside the JET application and this conduct directly to BPM to create the relevant tasks. So now if I go to my pending tasks, I will see this pending task and then I'm taking this in charge. And here you will see I'm in the second step of this uh, thing, of this, of my task task I have to do. Here are the policy members and from the policy members you will see all the members that exist in this policy. I can edit them and moreover I can add a new member if I want to. For example here I can create a new member. I can add the photo of this just to have a notion and also We have added some nice feature like a drag and drop where here you can arrange a member, meaning that you can take a member and drag and drop to another category and then the member automatically goes to the new category. I just picked that in order just to show you the complexity of the application. It's a very complex application that has a lot of business in behind that and uh, I just wanted to give you a sample of our work so far. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so, also. So that's three very short overviews of amazing applications, I think, being created with JET. Um, are there any questions from anybody or any comments? You can unmute yourself. You guys are mute, muted by default when you enter into the room, but you can unmute yourself or you can use the chat feature and just ask a question yeah. that way and we can, we can work that way. 
Well, thank you anyway very much for those uh, brief overviews. And anyone here on the call, you are very welcome to present your applications in similar ways in future meetups. When we do a call for the meetup and we, we say, hey, here's the agenda, there's always a moment wherein you can say, hey, I would like to contribute my story. Or we have, of course, a success stories page where we want to promote your product. So if you have products based on JET in production, we would love to promote that um, and to share your skills and knowledge uh, with, with JET, um, with the world. Um, maybe we can then switch to the next topic, which is um, community activities around the world. And there's several going on. I think first we're going to go to Thomas Schuster in um, Pforzheim in Germany to talk about um, usage of JET in a um, technical college to learn about JavaScript. Um, can you tell us a bit about that project? And if you want to share something, um, you can take over the, um, the mm -hmm. control or you can just talk. Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Gerd Jan. Um, my name is Thomas Schuster. I'm uh, teaching software engineering in uh, Pforzheim University of Applied Sciences. And as Gerd Jan just mentioned, we've introduced uh, Oracle Chat in a, in a project uh, setup with uh, students that were really not much experienced with JavaScript and not much experienced with mobile development. So um, the um, the lessons learned here was, or maybe let let me. I just actually wanted to uh, share my screen. So is it just that I click in, here? In, in the menu bar, you should see start okay, share. So and it uh, okay. So yes, there it's coming up. Perfect. You can see my screen already. We can. Okay. Yeah. So. Basically, uh, we started with uh, um, a space in, so for all our project projects, we are using Confluence and Jira um, uh, in conjunction with a uh, GitHub Classroom. And so in this case, we've had six projects. Uh, four had been conducted with Oracle Jet. Um, two were based on other technologies. And all those um, applications were for the Department of Culture and History for the city of Pforzheim. So we've had one project that dealt with uh, like uh, some digital city guide. Um, we've had a digitalization for a museum, feedback application, and some something for very, very uh, special historic sites. Um, so all the students started basically with uh, this um, LearnJet um, MOOC from Gerdian. Um, and we've had an introduction to JET in first place where we demonstrated how to set up the environment, um, create a first application and where is it? I just opened one here. So to to see what the result looked like. So this is uh, this um, augmented museum. So they created, so sorry, it's all in German, but uh, they created uh, something like a tour for uh, students to walk through the mu museum. And uh, in this case, basically we discussed uh, using sensors and stuff like that. So you c would know where in the museum you are. Uh, but unfortunately, students were not able to accomplish that. And I admit it's not that easy because uh, with the GPS, it was uh, to course to really know where you are currently. So you would have to use other sensors like uh, Bluetooth or something, and they couldn't accomplish that in the first place. But they created a tour where you, you see where to go to in this site. And then you could start the tour and get hints where to go next. And you always get some, some like feedback and ideas what you are looking at uh, right now. So the whole tour is like basically pictures and find something and some 
you get some explanations of the tour. So this was this uh, one, uh, let's see. And what was, the, what was the feedback from the students and how did they so, feel about Jet? Yeah, that's what I, what I just wanted to add. Uh, so we've had a, a couple of, of other um, applications. And so the lessons learned from that was um, even that uh, if we uh, introduced uh, how to create the application in first place, the students had some difficulties really to follow exact our procedures so some so um, ah, I should have mentioned we wanted them to create so that's what they did really create a hybrid application and deploy it to multiple uh, devices and some really forgot to add platforms so that caused some trouble um, others really what, what most of them had difficulties designing the layout, changing it away from uh, the starter templates, because all started with the starter templates. Um, so, but in the end, everybody could could accomplish to create one uh, one of those apps, and um, yeah, some some really didn't create a mobile app. Um, so. For us, the lessons learned was, okay, there is some struggle in layout changes, CI, uh, the platform stuff. So our idea was for a next round with the uh, new students in the next semester, we would create a um, basic application that all already has the incorporate CI of the city, for instance, and has some minor... Um, uh, actions imp already implemented so they can really try and set up on these. Um, what I actually would like to show, but it does not work on my PC because uh, I have some difficulties with my emulator right now since I installed an update. Mm -hmm. um, one was really uh, they had been uh, able to create or integrate uh, Cordova plugins. Um, they used Wikitude to uh, really recognize some objects. And that was really nice, but unfortunately I can't demonstrate it right now. Perfect. Um, but in the end, mm. uh, for us, we will create a starter template and I hope in, in next time the students will get farther with the development of their own applications. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. And it's great to hear Jet being used in the classroom. Yeah, we will continue, definitely. Perfect. So mm -hmm. let's, um, shall we switch to Seyi Onifade in Nigeria? Um, I can see you are here. Yes, I'm here. Can Hi. you tell us a bit about the project that you have running with Jet? Um, okay, so uh, we we use Jet uh, for our interns to train them in mobile development. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can perfectly. Okay, uh, I would like to share my screen if you don't mind. Just for yes, a minute. please do, please do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so screen share. Yeah. There we are. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, okay so my, uh, I am one of the organizers of this program. It's a remote internship for um, young people in Africa. We gather them using Slack and give them tasks to work on using particular technologies. Uh, in the past, we've used Jets and we assigned them um, projects to build using Jets, though I can't show any of them right now. But well, we are starting a new version, a new uh, edition of the program very soon, and we plan on using Jets for automating some of the things that we do. Uh, right now, we use um, we use this to keep track of their progress, assign them points, and it's really stressful because we have a lot of them, up to seven thousand of them, and it's very stressful for the tutors. So what we are planning on doing is. So use Jets to create a platform where they can um, submit their tasks and the grading can be done as uh, 
automatic as possible. Um, uh, so this is our plan, and we we are hoping that the next meetup would uh, would make we will have something to share at the next meetup perfect. to show you what we've done with uh, Jet. That's perfect. Thank you very much. So that's yeah, uh, right. So yeah. sorry, uh, JB. I don't really have any project to, project to no. share. Right? I was just going to say, this is really great, and it's something that we're very excited about to see both these internships and you know the, the other internship we did down in South Africa last year, or two years ago, rather, uh, with what uh, Codex is doing and so forth. I think it's, it's extremely powerful in what it delivers and, and beyond just the technology. It's what it delivers for, for people's future, and it's, it's great right. to see you doing this. Really excited about it. So thank you from thank you. the larger community for what you're doing. Yes, thank you very much. And um, there is a project going on, a hackathon that went on two years ago in South Africa with a company called Steltex. You set it up. And the plan is for another hackathon to happen uh, between um, students and interns at Steltex in South Africa and people in Capgemini in the UK. We won't hear about that this time. Um, the planning is going on um, and potentially other organizations can join in. So if if anyone here on the call is working with students or has contacts with students or you want to get new interns from those students, um, Steltex in South Africa and Capgemini in the UK is very much involved with that and they're setting up a hackathon using Oracle Jet to do that, um, training our people and selecting from the students the interns that they want to have in their organization. So you'll hear more about that in the next meetup. But if anyone finds that concept interesting, please let us know, and you can also join in with that hackathon uh, concept. Um, but we're going to switch um, quickly on to John Sim from Fishbowl Solutions. He's going to tell us about a set of resources he's been building up. So John, take it away. Perfect, thanks, dear Jim. So let me just share my screen. It says awesome. <laughs> it says awesome. Yes, it does. Right. So um, one of the things that's available out there for other frameworks or tool, I guess, Jet isn't really a framework, it's more of a toolkit, but for example, if you look at Vue.js, React, is um, a lot of these, a lot of people in the community are creating a, a list of awesome things related to that project. So a list of uh, links and resources that are centralized and they're all hosting them within the Git repository. So if you look here, this is a list of all of the awesome lists that have been created out there. So we've got Electron, we've got React, Xamarin, et cetera. And if you go into them, it generally provides you with a, a list of resources. So what I've done is I've done exactly that until we get, for example, the tech exchange and get uh, valuable information out there. Because in the past, I found it really hard to find resources. So I've looked over the internet and this is, these are basically a list of curated items that I found that I believe that the community would find useful. And if you want, feel free to push your links into here and add links to share out to the community. It's, it's so simply, for example, we've it's, got... It, it's simply a Git repository. So anyone can go in there and add their own links. Just provide yeah. a pull request and John will merge them. That's it. Yeah, and some people have already started pushing links across. So I've already been accepting those push requests. So you've got you things from getting started, the official resources, things the community have done, your tech tips, uh, yes. links to the so, new so, resources. So, so very quickly to, to jump in there, um, we are posting two minute tech tips. If you go a little bit higher, we've been doing that since quite recently. Every Friday, a new two-minute tech tip is provided. And if anyone um, on this call has tips to share, um, please let us know. And we can um, get you set up to contribute um, to this platform. So there's, it's a very nice and easy way to share two-minute tech tips with other people. And we started doing this. Anyone is welcome to participate as well, like Soham has been doing from Capgemini. But anyone else is welcome to join in too. Uh, John, you should uh, you should consider registering the site with uh, uh, DigitalOcean for Hacktoberfest this year. So as people are doing their pull requests, they actually uh, get Hacktoberfest points as well. It'd be nice. 
Mm. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so links to the books that are available. Um, and then finally, one of the things that I'm hoping, and especially now that I heard Evan talking about his components, um, if you do get them up onto Git, please think, consider this as a resource to also share your comp components out with the community. Um, I've created one, which is a, uh, a JET capture or recapture uh, type of solution here, um, which you can pull into your project. Um, it's JET based, um, but what's interesting about this is it, that it's using a, uh, another web component that I created using Stealth to produce pure JavaScript. So without any libraries behind the scenes, pure JavaScript. And then I'm passing uh, the bindings across to that third party uh, component, which I'm importing uh, via require JS into this web component. And you can all you can look at the code and everything is available to you here. So that is it from me. Very cool. Thank you very much. Very cool. If you somehow manage to squeeze all of that content into the hour and we have a couple of minutes left, are there any uh, comments or questions or requests from anybody? Just a simple question, Radian. The uh, um, Visual Studio Code extension you demonstrated earlier, um, should I be able to just find it on the extensions marketplace from ah from that's a, yeah thank you thomas yeah thank you thomas that's a perfect segue i forgot yes. to actually mention that so let me share my screen just for a second uh john if you can stop and let me share 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 hang on is my i moved my little doohickey thing around and I can't figure out how to share on my screen. But I've got, oh, there it is. Never mind. Got it. Um, so the easiest way to find this is just do a quick search. Do a, a search on uh, Oracle Jet download. And uh, I know that's a little uh, convoluted and we should have a link somewhere. But um, I'll add a link to it in the video when we push this up to YouTube as well. But if you just do Oracle Jet download, the, the first option that comes up is the what used to be the OTN download site. Now they've rebranded it, so it looks a little bit um, uh, different. But if you scroll down in here, you'll find the beta version and also right above it, the instructions. So there's instructions on how to install it and um, you do this manual install today. We are working on publishing it into the Visual Studio Code extension marketplace. Uh, it's just gonna take us a little bit longer to do that. Um, it's ready to go. We're just going through the processes uh, again with lawyers and, and other people uh, to get it out to the marketplace. So, but for now, you'll be able to download it right from here. The beta version is available today. You can work with that. Uh, it does not contain that custom web component uh, feature that I showed. Uh, that will come out at the same time as Jet 7.2 on uh, September 16th. Okay. And it'll be available in the same place right here. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thanks for asking. Well, I think we're at the end of the meetup. Uh, thank you all very much for participating. Um, JB mentioned we'll have our next one in January, February. We might have one earlier, some, sometime towards the end of the year. Um, we'll see, but um, we want to have this on a, a, you know, three or four times a year, but not, not too often. It has to be special. It can't be every other week. <laughs> we have to uh, maintain some, some level of um, that it's, uh, you know, this is something for the community to get together, to share tips and tricks and experiences and insights. And so if in your organization you're making use of JET, um, please let us know and, and share your insights here and your tips and, and your demos. Also let us know if you have um, uh, success stories and use cases to share. We want to promote the work that you're doing with JET and let the, let the world know what's going on with, uh, with your JET usage. Um, and so I think, I think with that, um, that's the end of our uh, meetup. Um, JB, do you have anything that you would like to add? No, just thank you for everyone that joined. Uh, thanks to all of you that will be watching on the uh, recordings. We'll put this up on on uh, on the YouTube channel 
as soon as possible. It takes a little bit of time to get it up there, but uh, within the next few days. And uh, we look forward to talking to you guys in the future. If you're at Open World or Code One, there's lots of opportunities to stop by and say hi. So please do. And we look forward to seeing you. And we put Thanks, that, everyone. We put that schedule uh, for Open World and Code One up on Twitter. So anyone interested, um, please just take a look uh, on Twitter and you'll find all that information out there. Okay. Thank you. Definitely. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.